Welcome, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us at Solidarity to Celebrate 2023. Right? As I was saying before some of you arrived, I know there are a bunch of people um, who wanted to be here tonight and could not come because they're not feeling well, because we are still very much functioning within a pandemic. Um, I appreciate those folks looking out for all of our health, and we will be posting a video of this event so that they don't have to miss anything. Um, I also want to note that because COVID is very much with us and we all need to be protected, if you enter the building uh, when it's time to get food or to use the bathroom or for any other purpose, please put on a mask. It is required. You can find masks at this table over here, and we also have some masks right by the door in case you forget yours. This is for all of our safety. So thank you so much for being mindful of that. Um, I am really honored to be in this space with you tonight in this tradition that was started by Miriam Kaba back in 2014. Miriam was being honored by some national organization and she was like, yeah, whatever, if they're going to do that, I'm going to honor a whole bunch more people <laughs> and hosted an event at Whole House where some of us were celebrated. And coming out of that event and how meaningful it was and the connections we made that night, some of us decided that this should continue. And one of the things that continues about that tradition that Paige May co-organized the next incarnation of with me the following year is that there is art that was made specifically for this event that is made for the honorees. And all of our honorees tonight will get two prints per person being honored because we know that for everyone we recognize and easily see should be honored, there are people that we don't see, right? Because most of organizing is unseen. And so we want to equip our honorees to go back to their communities and continue to celebrate folks whose names we might not know, whose faces we might not see, but who also deserve to be told, you should be celebrated for what you're doing. So I'm grateful to Corey Lynn and Naima Thomas for the tremendous art they've created for this event that folks are gonna, yes, thank you. Let's applaud that. The tremendous art that they have created for this event to give people a lasting acknowledgement that we celebrate this work that is happening in the name of solidarity. So we're gonna hear from folks who are doing some really important work tonight and we are going to enjoy some great food and drink together. Um, if you are currently in need of something to drink, we have wine and non-alcoholic beverages over at the table there. Um, there's also some hard liquor for those who are so inclined. <laughs> and um, since the food was late in arriving because it's been that kind of day, um, we're just gonna move through the program and then enjoy the food and drink together when we're done. But if you have an issue where you require the food sooner, like if you have a little one who needs to eat, if you have a blood sugar issue, um, you can make your way to the kitchen at any time and take care of your needs. Um, so to get us going tonight, we are going to begin with some poetry from my comrade Atina Danner, who is a beloved poetess to this community and a member of the Lifted Voices Collective. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for celebrating with us. Um, thank you for showing your beautiful faces. I'm going to do a little bit of an invocation to get us going, some kind of ancestral mood stuff, and then I will share a poem. So this uh, is called Throughline. Ancestors all around me touch the through line out of the past, old magnolia. 
ever reaching mind the branches for their teaching see the future in the flowers guard the roots where souls are bound hear the owl cry hear the signs now hear the spirit find your way home thank you river thank you jesus thank you rhythm carry me home carry me home thank you elders carry me home my ancestors carry me home touch the through line carry me All right, some of you have heard this before. I wrote this poem for another event in this very space um, for the uh, release of Kelly's book that, um, with Miriam Cabo that was released this year. This is a poem called Relating to the Origin. I know this song. I belong here. Let me tell you how I got here. Movement was my government cheese, my block on Damon Street in Flint, Michigan at Sunset Activism was my immunization, my after-school program, my family. Which is to say I was a child, didn't know why I was there, what was important, or how much it really meant. To me, it simply was. Mike Brown was the straw that broke my back so many terrors before and since but trauma is a time machine wounds are checkpoints across our timelines I am scrolling on social media unable to stop I am trapped horror struck between the lenses of endlessly streaming eyes I am running down State Street toward the gathering crowd, surprising myself with a guttural howl. I am working two jobs, working three jobs, trying to show up when I can show up, drinking rocket fuel, eating lightning so I can show the fuck up. It was the babies and the smalls and the comrades who gathered me out of my scattershot attempts to make a difference, who pulled me on to the collective path I was born again, wailing at the chaos of new life, a child among wiser children, stumbling eager through the lessons, tripping over my unlearning, stepping hesitantly on shaking legs, nearly paralyzed with the urgency of things. Unprepared, but ready, halting, but forward. I know this song. Bucket drum orange lights I am lying on the ground singing smell of asphalt sweat we are arms linked in the throng singing icy wind and watering eyes we are marching in the street singing halyard chord striking through the silence I am laid open before the crowd singing come Oh, come, we belong together. We are strong together. I am dancing into traffic, leaning into faith. I know this song. I remember that night I found myself singing along, a song of longing and knowing. Some of us were so focused on the sun, we failed to see the moonlight. Some of us 
were so focused on the moon, we missed the cartography of the stars. Some of us were so busy looking up, we had to learn to look at each other. Some of us have been so focused on looking that we will need to learn listening again, learn touching and feeling again, learn smelling and tasting and seeking again. Drive your hands deep as you can into the dirt. You will know it when you find it. Don't tell me what is not possible. My time and your breath are better spent blowing parachutes of dandelion fluff, investing in bright black futures. I belong here. We belong here. Wake into this, our story. Boy, still and small, deep inside all, I hear you call, singing in storm and rain, sorrow and pain. Still we remain singing, calming my fears, quenching my tears through all the years, singing. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Atina. And Tanuja, if you can join us up here. There are a lot of folks who aren't with us tonight for all kinds of complicated reasons, and there are folks who aren't with us tonight because they are no longer with us. So we wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that grief and that absence, and also that presence, because they are still with us. Thanks, Kelly. Oh. I want to start by lifting up this beautiful art that is available for everybody who wants to take some home. It was created by Shireen Damra, and for the transcript, I want to offer a description of the art. Um, on a pale lavender background with scattered lavender clouds, text reading, collective grieving is healing, are placed above three brown-skinned figures. The one on the right is wearing a head dress, head cover. The one in the middle is darker skinned. They're holding a collection of flowers that are magenta with green leaves, turquoise leaves. And the one on the right is a darker skinned person with beautiful curly hair. And they're embracing one another as a sun sets behind them. So take a copy with you, post it on your wherever you want, and remember this message. And I'm going to share. So I'm not a poetess, um, but I was moved by the art to create a poetic response the gathering. On the day we gathered, I almost canceled. I didn't want to talk about it again. I didn't want to look in anyone's eyes, see their pity or their bad attempt to, to hide their fear of my pain. But yeah. Oh, thank you. Can you hear me now? Okay, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Thank you, Atina. Thanks for looking out. I always mumble. 
So why don't I begin again? All right. <laughs> the gathering. On the day we gathered, I almost canceled. I didn't want to talk about it again. I didn't want to look in anyone's eyes, see their pity or their bad attempt to hide their fear of my pain. But then I remembered the flowers I bought, marigolds and chrysanthemums from Trader Joe's. No one else volunteered to bring flowers. Three of us showed up. To my relief, we barely spoke. The lake wind whipped our hair. Its spray kissed our faces, welcoming us. There really was nothing to say. I held up the marigolds and the chrysanthemums, my humble offering. My friends stood next to me, one on my left, one on my right. We breathed, our heads so close together, I could smell their shampoo. We breathed, my inhales harmonizing with their exhales, their exhales facilitating mine. Behind us, the sun began to set. We kept our backs to it and felt its warmth, your arm on my arm their hand on my shoulder. We breathed. The frozen boulder inside my chest began to melt. We grieved. I held the marigolds and chrysanthemums in my open hands and we breathed. Benji Hart writes in Rebellious Morning, it is not merely okay to grieve. It is wholly necessary if we are to remain connected to our collective power, truly invested in our liberation, and whole enough. Whole enough to sustain ourselves in struggle. We need to grieve for those we have lost, for ourselves, for our bodies, for the land, for our families, and our ancestors. This is me now. So all that is very true. At the same time, real talk in a culture like ours, where so many of us have been raised to live isolated and individualistic lives, the notion of grieving together might feel impossible. <laughs> and overwhelming to be that vulnerable. If you can relate, can I see a show of hands if you're willing? Okay, I'm glad to see I'm not the only one feeling this trepidation. And on the flip side, so often when others are grieving, we can feel at a loss for what to do. And it can be easy to freeze up and do nothing because we don't want to do the wrong thing. If you've ever felt like that, can you raise your hand if you're willing? Yeah. I am right there with you. So right now, not to make this a Skillshare, but low key to make it a Skillshare because pop popular education, each one teach one. If you're willing, <laughs> I invite you to turn to a neighbor or someone in front of you and just maybe share one thing that someone has done with you in a time of grief that actually helped. And it can be anything, okay? I'm gonna pause. I'm not gonna make you share. All right, I invite you to continue this conversation after the remarks, maybe when we're eating some delicious food. 
I have one more question or one more activity. If you're willing now, I invite you, and you can decline this invitation, right? Everything is invitational. If you're willing, I invite you to call to mind someone or something that you have lost. If it feels supportive to you, I invite you to whisper their name out loud or say their name. Take as long as you need and I'll hold the silence. Thank you. And for everyone who named someone, we see you, we hear you, and we grieve with you. Thank you for thank you, Tanusha. It's so important to hold space for our grief in these times of forced normalization when we're being encouraged to move on with our lives as though nothing has happened and we all know what's really happening. Um, we're not only... What? Okay, we're, we're good. We're not only suffering the catastrophe of an ongoing pandemic, but the ongoing catastrophe of capitalism, which is constantly robbing us of what we should not lose. Constantly failing to honor the losses that are so real in our lives. So I'm grateful to make space for that. Grateful for everyone who is acknowledging that in this shared space together. So to begin with honoring our honorees tonight, I would like uh, Rogers Park Food Not Bombs to join me up here. Rogers Park Food Not Bombs is a collective that rescues food from the waste stream and gets it to people who need it, no questions asked, while supporting local movements to combat oppression and inequity. Their focus is aligned with mutual aid rather than state or nonprofit efforts. They know that capitalism creates a world in which food is scarce and people are alienated from one another. At their core, these folks believe that mutual aid is a commitment to building joy and power by forming bonds of solidarity and care with our neighbors. And I just want to say on a personal level, this is the area that I live in where these folks do their work. It's the area I've spent my adult life in, and I feel that their contributions to a culture of care in that community are simply immeasurable. So I am so, so grateful for their work and that they're here tonight and Let's hear from them. All right, cool. Yeah, we're just super deeply honored to be in this space uh, among all these amazing people and uh, receiving food. So yeah, we just want to give love back. And as important, of course, it is to acknowledge each other and celebrate each other, continuing the work that we're all doing. So we're going to do that, and we know you're going to do that too. And one of our comrades prepared a statement. <laughs> I'm going to read something that our comrade and friend Carly wrote. Uh, she couldn't be here tonight, but um, I, this is something that, like, she put it better than any of us could, but we're all, like, a thousand percent, like, behind, behind these words. Um, louder? Yeah, okay. Yeah, sorry about the sound, y'all. This is Apologies from Haymarket House. It's not Food Nut Bombs are eternally grateful for the recognition of our work. Although some may see the weight of industrial food waste and ever-increasing poverty as a depressing, endless task, we do not. Our work is built on solidarity and community building. Our work of feeding the community from the excesses of food waste can only happen via abundance. The state and capitalism attempt to control food, convince us of scarcity, that we are alone in our struggles, one missed paycheck and you'll soon go without food. But try as it might, the state and capitalism cannot disappear the bounty of food that our earthly home provides for us. 
We are inundated with mountains of rescued food on a weekly basis. And perhaps the public nature of Food Not Bombs is the most radical thing about it. Every week, we meet new neighbors with familiar questions. Answering them is a delight. To see an interruption in scarcity mindset is just fun. Yes, we are serving food in the streets. Yes, it's free. Yes, it's really free. No, you do not have to prove anything. All neighbors are welcome. Come and eat. One and all, come share in this abundance. Thank you for that. Can you all hear me? Yeah. We're good? Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for the mic swap. Make sure I'm in the right spot. All right. Our next honoree is Organized Communities Against Deportations, or OCAD. Please come and join me. I'll get started. OCAB is an undocumented-led organization that has fought back against criminalization of immigrants through anti-deportation defense public campaigns, direct action, and advocacy that centers those most directly impacted by ICE. They are also part of the network of organizations and volunteers who have continuously responded to the needs of many of our newly arriv arriving immigrant neighbors. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Montserrat Ariola, and I am here on behalf of OCAD to accept this award. And I, um, I wrote a little something. It's just the paragraph, so bear with me. Um, it is with great honor and humility that our organization has been acknowledged for our social justice work in this community. On behalf of our organization, and the entire collective effort that makes OCAD, we want to say thank you and we appreciate the recognition and greatly appreciate everyone standing in solidarity with OCAD to fight for all undocumented immigrants and to stop deportations and separations of families, to hold all agencies responsible for all the injustices and that, and that um, continue to occur in our community, sorry. Together we will prevail and ignite a beautiful movement to fight for our voices to be heard and to have human right, our human rights to be honored in this movement. We stand for social justice equality. Thank you. Tara has the recipe. Well, we are at a moment in the night that uh, I wrote some comments for that are now smeared with some rain. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is very important to me because this is a moment where we're honoring someone who's very dear to me. Um, this event is called Solidarity to Celebrate. And I am so grateful to be presenting this year's Lifetime Achievement Award to a co-struggler who has practiced solidarity as a way of life for all the years I have known her. Some of you may know Christine Giovannis from her fierce and powerful work for the Chicago Teachers Union or her work in support of Palestinian liberation. You may be familiar with her movement photography or you might know her as one of the co-founders of Chicago Indie Media. If you were part of the movement to stop the war in Iraq, you may have known her as a constant co-organizer of those protests. The truth is, I can't enumerate all of the places you might have met Chris over the years or the contexts in which you might have been supported by her because she has been there for so many of our struggles as a supporter, as a mentor, as a spokesperson, and as a freedom fighter. Some of us know Chris as someone who believed in us before we had figured out how to believe in ourselves, as someone who taught us to trust ourselves and each other. Over the years, Chris would often reach out to me during a crisis and say, give me marching orders. With care, humility, and hard-won skills, 
Chris has shown up relentlessly for our struggles. In fact, I was worried about being the one to pay tribute to Chris tonight because I felt like there was so much to say that I couldn't possibly get it right. So I asked some friends and co-strugglers for advice, and I would like to share what some of them had to say. The first comment comes from a comrade who said, I was introduced to Chris in August of 2010 via Facebook by a dear mutual friend. I remember the first struggle I documented about a month later, watching the organizers turn to Chris for press releases in the middle of the night, how they had so much faith in her. And of course she came through. Chris welcomed me with open arms into the world of documenting the movement in Chicago. I was inexperienced and had so much to learn and she was so very generous with me and encouraged me to continue the work. I echo what others have already said about her political commitment, clarity, and strategy in organizing, the beautiful, colorful language we all love about her. <laughs> On a personal level, she's been there for me when I've been physically hurt through more than one heartbreak and always makes me feel so, so loved whenever I see her, whether it's at a protest, some movement-related event, or her kitchen table. I feel truly honored and lucky every time she calls me sister. One of Chris's co-strugglers in the Chicago Teachers Union said, she always helped us remember who the real enemy is, especially when we had internal squabbles at CTU. Another co-struggler who Chris and I have both fought hard alongside said that Chris taught a whole generation, actually multiple of Chicago organizers, how to be smart about media strategy, can swear like a sailor, and set you straight when you're full of it, and yet has a tenderness and true compassion for her comrades, such a rare and wonderful combination. Another comrade echoed that Chris is shockingly good at swearing, <laughs> which is praise I find aspirational. <laughs> Another community member said, Chris has always exemplified how building the left is about building community. Every time I would see her, be it at a press conference, as I said, there's rain, <laughs> or a mass demonstration, I was always touched by how she would go out of her way to warmly, personally acknowledge you were there. Her photos were an extension of that as well, documenting how these movements are real people who are moving for justice, all the while in relation to each other. That comrade also noted that Chris also helped us remember that political disagreements are not personal and that we can debate and still be comrades who would go to the wall for each other even if you had a strategic disagreement. Comrades can support each other and disagree. A mutual friend of ours said, I have been a fan of Chris's since Harold Washington's administration when she worked for Chewy's aldermanic campaign in March of 1986 special election which ended the council wars. Chewy ran against Verdo an, a Verdoliak ally who labeled Chewy 100% communist. <laughs> I've been a fan and friend of Chris ever since. <laughs> One of my besties said, Chris is strategic, recognizing the importance of both direct action and the press it gets and controlling your message to the degree that you can. She recognizes the need for a multifaceted approach to effective change. And lastly, a friend and co-struggler said, she always says, fight the fuck back and don't let the haters get inside your head. The truth is we could go on all night about how important Christine Giovannis has been to this community. And we would still only be scratching the surface because Chris and her late partner Dick spent decades building bonds of solidarity in this city. And those bonds, have made it the fabric of our work stronger. Even beyond the stories that many of us can tell about how Chris touched our lives and our work, there are so many waves and ripples in our movements that have been set in motion by her labor and solidarity. So many people who will never know how or why someone came through for them. But I think it's important naming here and now that those impacts were made possible because of the lessons that Chris shared. Chris, I am so honored to call you my comrade and my friend, and I am so grateful that I'm the one who gets to thank you on the behalf of a community that loves you for all that you have done, all that you do, and for being the person you are. Please join me up here, friend.
Okay, so I, I, I'm going to not lie. I've had a few glasses of wine, and I'm slightly inebriated. Just not going to lie about that. Um, there's a few other things I want to say. I, I, I see a lot of people here who I know, um, including younger people, yay, um, you know, from ongoing struggles. Um, and I see a lot of people that I don't know, and that's fucking fabulous. Um, you know, our job, and I say this as someone who's ostensibly on my way out <laughs> with this stupid cancer shit, um, you know, our job is to prop up the next generation or two or three or four. That is our job. Um, some of us have some historical knowledge of some of the crap that the movement has gone through in the last, like, mm, I'd say 50 years. That'd be about right. Um, and that's okay, right? Because even though we're entering, uh, I think, a period of, like, literally the potentially the most damaging um, period in our history, you know, where maybe we'll survive this and maybe we won't, you know, where the climate crisis is gargantuan. And behind that is the ongoing, you know, effort in, the, in particularly the U.S. to blame black and brown people for their shit instead of taking care of corporate business, um, you know, and that's okay because y'all can fight that. Y'all are fighting that. Y'all are stepping up um, and a couple of us are available if we can be useful in some way, shape, or form. Um, but you are the future, all of you. And I don't care if you're my age or older or like, a preteen. Y'all are the, we keep this movement going by simply keeping this going. And that doesn't mean that you don't take, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 or 40 years to raise kids and do other important shit. You have to live your lives, right? That's okay. Um, and still stay committed to the movement, you know, in as best a way as you can even if that feels like it's nothing to you, it makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. You, I mean, I'm shocked at the kids that I've encountered just in the last six or eight months who are like, I was 13 when I met you and you're all right. You know, so I'm just telling you, never know the kind of impact that you're going to have. What you do know is that you're pushing in the broad scheme of things for justice for not just peace, but peace with justice. So I commend you all for this. You are the next generations. You are the people who will pass it on. You are part of the folks who are part of the resistance. Whether or not you feel like you're doing an active job, and I salute you, and it's an honor to be here. Thank you. We love you, Chris. <laughs> so much gratitude for this space. And so much gratitude for the people in it and for our mentors and our touchstones. Our next honoree is Chicago Community Jail Support. Please join me up here. Chicago Community Jail Support is a group of volunteers who want to abolish police, jails, and prisons. They understand mutual aid as community survival pending revolution, which means they work to help those leaving Cook County Jail and their loved ones with their immediate needs, such as free phone calls, transportation, food, water, first aid, warm clothing, and housing whenever possible. Chicago Community Jail Support supports Black, Brown, and Indigenous self-determination, and they know that will never be achieved so long as CPD and CCJ exist. Hi, uh, my name is Amalia. Um, I'm going to go a little off the cuff here, which is 
really jail supporty of me. Um, <laughs> uh, basically, we started as an effort to um, like await people coming out of jail from the protests in uh, 2020, and quickly realized that uh, everyone coming out of jail needed help, and we needed to remain there even after all the protesters had been released. Um, we've been going strong. So, I mean, we've been going as many days as we can since then. We try to maintain a daily presence. And I think that's um, a big part of who we are is knowing that, like, it can't be a sometimes thing. Um, I mean, we try to, obviously, we have our limits, but it has to be, abolition has to be something that is practiced every day um, because of how damaging it is to um, uh, black and brown communities in Chicago. Um, so I think that's like something that we're still, I mean, we literally are, we're there tonight. There are people that can't be here because they were physically on the ground uh, waiting for people to give them water, phone calls, rides home. We've given hundreds of rides home in blizzard conditions. We've been out there in tornadoes and blazing heat and freezing cold temperatures, all of which the jail um, still releases people out into. And so um, I just, want to really thank uh, everyone in this organization because I feel like they've taught me so much about what solidarity really means um, <laughs> because it's like completely community run and it's completely <laughs> our own free labor and um, and to see how dedicated people are to it is uh, really amazing. So um, I think Eric was going to talk a little bit about the conditions at the jail currently. but. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, and when I was getting up, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll follow Amalia. Um, but, yeah, thanks, everyone, for, for coming out. Um, and, yeah, thanks for all the support. Uh, as Amalia was saying, it it's kind of, um, it can weigh on you just how frequent our presence is needed for each other and how frequent the um, abuses of the jail happen. Um, so just this summer, we've seen um, the jail cut off water uh, to many of the people inside to what it sounds like was all of Division 5. Um, in the winters, we see where they uh, won't give coats to people in sub-zero temperatures. Um, and kind of what we're finding is there's somehow no limit to the amount that, A, the jail will do that that the abuses that they'll cause, but then also there's no limit to our responses and in a very broad we in how we can show up for each other. Um, and that's something that at jail support, we're like really trying to focus, focus in on right now of there is always something that the jail will be doing no matter, no matter if we, you know, hit one weasel when it pops up or whatever, they will always find something else and just getting people who stay caring and stay uplifting stories of people inside who stay, you know, being mad about this and being in the streets for it. Um, that's really important. And that actually gives us a lot of hope and gives us a lot of sense of solidarity. And so kind of as we're going through um, this summer where we just saw this summer, there was no stop to, to what the jail was doing this winter. We know it will be just the same because that's how it always is. Um, just staying together and staying uplifting um, what we're putting out and, and figuring out how we can go around and actually put a stop to this, which is close the jails, defund the police. Um, all right, that, I think that's it, thank you. Um, if anybody here has any interest in learning more about volunteering for jail support, um, you can talk to any of us um, and feel free. And if anybody watching at home uh, wants to uh, volunteer for jail support, you can Google us and find us on social media, send a message. We're always happy to talk to people and, and bring folks in however, however you want to help. Thank you all. Hello, I'm back. Okay, so our next honoree group um, is Chicago Volunteer Doulas. Would my fellow CVD people come up and join me, please? 
Come on. I see that face you're making, LaShondra. Come on. Come on. <laughs> yes, yes. Latina does not do it alone. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, full disclosure, I am on the board of Chicago Volunteer Duelists, so I'm doing double duty up here. Um, but So, I'm going to read the thing. So, for over a decade, Chicago Volunteer Doulas has been providing support for childbirth education, pregnancy, labor and delivery, and postpartum care to those who could not otherwise pay for it, as well as compensating the labor of the local community of birth workers. In the past several years, CVD um, has moved earnestly towards abolitionist values with the support of the current board, staff, and executive director, Lakeisha Harris, who could not unfortunately uh, be here today. We have moved our mission of birth justice and reproductive justice fully into our strategic plan, operating on values of anti-racism, birth justice, and bringing those on the margins to the center of our work and focusing on life-saving care, specifically for black birthing people, understanding that supporting black birthing people is going to bring up everybody in the system. I am proud to be a member of the CBD board and I am delighted to be able to share this honor with my comrades, so thank you. All right. <laughs> That's cool. I do want to just give a special shout out to our executive director, Lakeisha Harris, whom I know many of you know. She is uh, currently experience, experiencing a time of deep grief right now for some pretty significant losses in her life. And that's part of the reason that she couldn't be here to accept this for the organization herself. But I just want to send a nice burst of loving energy in her direction for the hard work that she's been doing to elevate this organization and to save the lives of black and brown uh, birthing people in Chicago and all around Chicago. So please uh, send your prayers and energy and all that good mojo in her direction. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's hear it again for the doulas. Because I know we have some great work in support of abortion care in this town, and that's so important. Shout out to Midwest Access and Chicago Abortion Fund. But we know that reproductive justice isn't just about ending pregnancies. It's absolutely about the right to do that. It's also about the right to safely bring children into the world when we choose it. So I have so much gratitude for the folks who are working to make that possible. Our fifth honoree tonight is Good Kids Mad City. If y'all folks could join me up here. Good Kids Mad City is a youth-led violence prevention org whose values are situated in abolition and transformative justice. Their goal is to bring young community members together to build unity, nurture healing, and create a thriving community for mutual aid to the pursuit of meaningful legislative change, Good Kids Mad City models a radical abolitionist politic that makes me proud to be in community with them. They also work to shift and reframe the narrative of urban violence by amplifying the voices of those most impacted. I have so much love for this group and, and I am honored to be in this space with you all tonight. Thank you. Okay, so I'll first give remarks from Damianti. She is one of our co-founders. <clears throat> As a youth-led organization, Good Kids Mad City has always aimed to ensure the safety of our community. As young organizers in 2018, we are so thankful to have been, oh, to have been led by our peers and other organizations that were willing to teach and share their knowledge. We learned from Asada's Daughters, No Cap Academy, and BYP 100 about the commitment to creating a safe space which became really foundational in eventually curating our own teachings in 2020. It is always really important to call back to our people who helped us and solidify our foundation. It'll be hard to shout everyone out in one speech, but the love that we saw put into the work before Good Kids Mad City was created helped us join the narrative and it is beautiful to be able to give back now. 
The creativity among the founding members of Good Kids Mad City allowed us a unique perspective into organizing, and we are thankful to have been welcomed. I think only a few of our mentors or older members have had the honor of meeting Mama Kaba. We hope it's okay to call you that, and if apologies if not. <laughs> but we know her best through her works. First, by supporting a person that we deeply care about, Brescia Meadows. As an organization, we've had the opportunity to work with Brescia and being able to experience her joy and kindness has been a pleasure. Providing to free Brescia and then supporting her afterwards set the example for us to how showing up for one another is an ongoing process of community care. We also know Ms. Kaba founded the Chicago Freedom School from with Chicago, which became a safe haven space for us to come to during the 2020 uprisings when CPD was brutalizing us in the streets. Chicago Freedom School provided care, healing, a place to rest, and food. We know she founded, she also founded Project Nia that supports survivors of sexual assault and wrongfully convicted trans and CIS women, but also fighting to free all survivors in abolished prisons. So thank you for your continued rag, radical legacy, and thank you for making space for youth like us to thrive in it. Thank you, Kelly, for your uplifting and radical online presence and writing, but more specifically, for when we didn't know who you were yet, back in 2019 and 2020, and you met us to give us gloves, hats, hand warmers, and more, donating to our mutual aid efforts. We thought you were a kind stranger only to find out you are a movement leader. <laughs> you constantly inspire us through your organizing for disability justice, indigenous rights, and more. Thank you both for writing Let This Radicalize You. We are reading it as an org and can't wait to finish it and collectively unpack those lessons learned. Now in 2023, it is amazing to see what the organization has grown to. Our foundation is crucial to looking forward, and we hope to continue to add to the narrative of living in the city and the world where we feel safe. And that was from Damianti, our co-founder. And from me. I'm honored to be here today, but I must say, if Ram hadn't closed my school at 15 years old, I wouldn't be here with you all. Over the years, my allies and peers have become more important than that, but family, or as I like to say, my cousins. During our fight for liberation, both of my hands couldn't account for the friends I've lost since before this fight. I like to give a moment of silence to honor them. We lost Daryl Ware, 19, Jacarion Johnson, 18, Jalene Flores, 21, Adeja Wilson, 21, Amarion Overton, 20, Anthony Vivians, 22, Clifton Williams, 21, Kiwan Carter, 18, Jamarion Wells, 15, Damari Black, 20, LaShawn Morris, 16, Von Shea Norman, 20, Sinead Robinson, 21, Kiwan Green, 23, and three of our own, Del Monte Johnson, 18, Contrell McNeil at 15. Yet those same losses fuel my drive to use my voice and connections to spread the truths that we all share in this room. Last week, speaking to city council, one of our young people asked, how much did our lives cost? How much do our lives cost for them to save us? Because the millions that they spend is still priceless because our lives are worth more than that. On a final note, our elected officials haven't taken necessary action that demonstrate the value of our lives and well-being. However, in this space, we protect each other and show love with each other. And through our movement, we show up for one another how family and community should. We've shaped those definitions together. Our fight is far from over, but I'm glad we're in this together. And in the end, we'll be able to say that triumph is ours. I love you all and thank you for honoring Good Kids Mass City. I um, a touch that y'all brought up, up that night outside uh, police headquarters when I showed up with those hats and gloves. It was, it was a hilarious and wonderful moment for me because someone said, a nice lady brought us hats and gloves. And someone else said, that's not a nice lady, that's Kelly Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> one 
one of the most joyful moments of my life, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the introduction I want in the world. <laughs> it's not a nice lady. That's Kelly Hates. Um, so we're at the point in the night where we have a special award for contributions to defense committee work. And it makes sense, I think, for me to note at this point what many of you know, which is that the Lifted Voices Collective is sunsetting this year. And we bring the public facing part of our work to a close um, in a really joyful and beautiful way. Basically, the work that we're a part of that we know needs to continue must grow in ways that would involve bringing in more people. And what we have in our collective is a family. And we want to keep that family. And so that's what we're going to do. And Lifted Voices will continue to exist as a family. But what we need is containers that are welcoming to more folks that are expanding, that are experimenting for the new work that needs to happen. So you'll be hearing more about those projects, which will be emerging into the new year. Um, reciprocity and struggle will continue the mutual aid work we've been doing to help keep organizers housed and fed and to help projects that are doing important work not falter because of brief setbacks. Um, doing Justice Collaborative will be a new formation that will continue some of the political education work that we've been involved with. And I believe Understory is a project, which a project that I'm working on with Tanusia is going to carry forth the spirit of some of the work that we've done and that I've learned from within our collective about how we sustain each other and what we actually need in order to survive. And I'm really grateful for this collective, for this work, and for all the projects. Those are just a few. Folks are working on a lot of things. As you've heard, Atina is involved with the doulas. There's a lot happening that our members are deeply engaged in. And I'm so proud of the work we've done together and the lessons learned that we'll be able to take into these new collaborations that are happening. But some of the most important work we've done with all of you has been around defense committee work, which you just heard folks talking about. Brisha was going to be here with us tonight, but she's among the people who was not feeling well and stayed home for everyone's safety. She wanted to express how grateful she is to all of you for the work that you did to make sure that she didn't, as the state intended, spend her life behind bars, but rather got to be liberated after too long a time, but still be liberated still as a young person and enter into the world and build community and have a chance to create a real life for herself among people who care. That's all any of us want, right? And so in gratitude, not just for what you've done for Brisha, but also what you've done for Marissa and what you've done for cases that folks have heard less about, right? There are so many cases that we have all thrown our weight behind that some of us have gone to jail for in order to get people out among us so they can join the work of organizing or get back to the work of living. We want to honor everyone in this space who has played any role in any of these protests, who has, whether virtually or in person, if you have supported an effort to get someone out who is being held by the state, this moment is for you. So if my volunteers who said they could help pass out awards could come forward. We have this beautiful piece that was created by Naima Thomas. And please go ahead and grab those and start handing them out. Um, and it says here, love is defending each other and our world together. And the protesters who are clustered together in this image are holding signs that say, Miriam taught us, free them all. And a quote from Monica Cosby, which is, we are refusing to abandon. And I would offer that the politics of refusing to abandon that are so key to the work we do in trying to liberate survivors who are caged for defending their own lives, these are the same politics we need in this time of 
mass death, mass abandonment, and climate collapse. This is how we survive together, by refusing to abandon. My own people, the Menominee people, survived an apocalypse, and this is how we did it. Because it was considered un-Menominee to let anyone starve if you had food. It was considered un-Menominee to leave anyone behind. And that is how we kept as many of us alive as possible for as long as possible until we had a legacy into the world that exists today. It should not have been possible, but those politics made it possible. And so these politics that y'all have helped uphold, that y'all are living, this is how we survive. This is how we survive together. And so we wanna honor that work and that collaboration. And we wanna thank you all so much for being people who refuse to abandon because this is how we're going to do the work ahead. This is how we're going to survive together. And we have to honor that work and honor each other. And we love you and thank you. And let's hear it for everyone who's done defense committee work here in Chicago. And now we're gonna hear from Latoni. <laughs> also, I don't think y'all gave yourselves enough of a hand. Can I hear it some more? For everyone who's done defense committee work here in Chicago, we freed a lot of people. We have freed a lot of people together. It's amazing what we have done. Please hold that. Check, check. Oh, is this one working too, Chuck? No, leave that. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm so th oh, so thankful to be here. Um, I won't be long because I was in a car with, um, you know, soul vegan food that I'm like, I think you all should have. I did sneak a little pieces, I'll be honest. Um, so you might see, you know, you'd be like, why is that, you know, it's, it's cut up, I'll be honest. <laughs> My name is Latoni Alvarado Rivera, and I have the privilege of serving as the executive director of Chicago Freedom School. Yes, oh, I'm so grateful to be here because, um, it's intense, y'all, and we are in the work. Um, and to be able to just like step back and honor and celebrate ourselves is such a gift. Thank you for the reminder. Um, and um, I, I, I feel like, uh, was I celebrated? I was honored as the, I was, right? Okay. <laughs> Because it's taken different iterations. And why I was like, oh, yo, I want to be there is because there was a time where it was like celebrating femmes, like femme organizers. And I received um, an, a piece of artwork and I was in the artwork. And I was like, this is the community that I want to build with. This is the place that I want to like make sure that I'm like fighting for. Um, and I know that there are moments when, um, oh, it's hard to have hope. Um, but then I see the amazing organizations that are being honored. OCAD, of course, Good Kids Mad City, Chicago Volunteer Doulas. Who else am I missing? Um, uh, the Chicago Jail Community Supports. It's nice. To, yes. Um, as well as um, Food Not Bombs, uh, which I feel like I, the, my first interaction with Food Not Bombs was, correct me if I'm wrong, it was during like the, like, um, the occupation. And I was like, oh, this is this is it. I support this. Um, you know, I was like, okay. Um, and at Chicago Freedom School, we cultivate and amplify the leadership of black and brown young people uh, who are envisioning and organizing towards collective healing and liberation. And Lifted Voices has been there um, as a partner, um, as a, a thought leader, as someone who, who allows us to be able to expand. And, uh, and oftentimes, you know, when we talk about um, abolition work, when we're thinking about like, how can we push beyond? Um, it's our own little fucking heads playing with us of like, no, this is what we're used to. We can't break out of these ideals. And um, Lifted Voices has always a lot come in to Chicago Freedom School and why, you know, the trust of like, um, yo, can you, you, you 
you know, when we, you know, there was times where it was like, hey, can you for $50 stipend come in and do a workshop on organizing, do a workshop on direct organizing with young folks, be able to talk about movement history in our work and be able to see how um, our movements in Chicago are allowing us to expand and create the world that we are envisioning, a world that doesn't rely on prison and cages, a world that is taking time to celebrate and uplift everyone in the movement because, you know, there are, you know, um, some folks might be like, oh, Mary Macaba, Kelly Hayes. Yes. <laughs> yes. All of it. And then there are folks who are just existing and living and doing what we know, what, how to do what we do. Um, but then we have uh, folks who are able to um, allow us to read or share and be in community to be able to, again, um, expand this work. And I think why I wanted to, why I'm so thankful to be here. Also, I did not know it was a toast. I was told, can you just give some little remarks? And Tunisia was like, don't blame, don't blame Kelly Hayes. Blame Miriam Kaba because that's who she learned it from. So we're, you know, we have to <laughs> recognize when we're modeling um, these behaviors. Um, <laughs> but, I'm <laughs> but I'm so grateful to be here. Um, and to be in honor of celebrating, uh, of course, it's not just the organizations, but our people in our community and our work and our uh, collective struggle working towards uh, fighting and resisting and uh, allowing for us to hope and dream and envision. Um, we know, you know, lifted voices and sunsetting. Um, and uh, during our time at Chicago Freedom School, most recently, um, you know, folks from lifted voices came and did workshops on direct organizing um, at our space during 2020. And prior, you know, prior to 2020, they would come and do workshops in 2020. Um, it was wild, right? And we were all trying to figure it out. Um, and when we, you know, remember that, like, well, remember, girl, we're in COVID. It was like, um, I both appreciated um, going to Kelly Hayes and being like, what, what, is, what do we need to do? Um, and it was so scary and figuring out this is the reality, right? If you, if, you, if you know Kelly Hayes and you talk to her too long, girl, it's still scary because there's so many others. But I'm like, girl, I don't want to know about that, but we need to know, right? Um, and and um, <laughs> it's, it's true. And... Um, and there's part of me is, um, is sad um, that Lifted Voices is sunsetting, but part of me recognizes that things come to an end, but they have cultivated a space where we can continue to learn and expand. Um, if you haven't already checked out um, Let This Radicalize You, I encourage you all, yes, to just take a minute to read an audible. We have copies at CFS. I'm sure I can steal you some from the, from the bookshelves here if you need to. Um, but purchase the book. <laughs> purchase the book. Um, make sure, you know, and continue learning and expanding. I um, mean, I think, and, and um, more than anything, continue celebrating. Um, because I know that it, it's so hard for us to just... Um, break out of it sometimes. Um, but when we're in community, like capitalism wants us to be in our whole, you know, it's, it's been a minute since I've been out. So I'm kind of like, oh, let me get a little, let me spike this drink. Let me get a little something. Um, but as I come out, it's like, oh yeah, ca capitalism wants us to isolate ourselves. Capitalism, um, you know, uh, wants us to, to not laugh and have joy and not be in community, not celebrate, not honor. Um, so this is why I'm so thankful to be here, um, to be in community, to celebrate and um, hopefully meet new folks, allow you all to meet and build with each other um, and know that the work of Lifted Voices lives on. Um, and knowing that at Chicago Freedom School, when you come in, when we talk about this work when, you know, um, of our founder, Miriam Kaba, is um, there is hope. And that's what I just want to be able to like share with you all that um, I remember uh, receiving the award and being like, oh, uh, you see me um, and you see all of me in, a, in, in movements where we still like have moments where we don't see everybody for their holistic self. Um, and Lifted Voices has always uh, allowed us 
allowed others to see our full holistic selves. So I just want to be able to um, continue creating those spaces at Chicago Freedom School. If it's one thing that I love is like young people will be like, yo, how can I support you? Um, what do you need? Um, young people giving affirmations? Oh my God, it's, it's, it's a gift. Um, and Lifted Voices has been such a gift uh, to our community. So I want to continue uplifting, celebrating um, in solidarity with all of you. Um, and what I want to say is um, congratulations. May you continue to shine. May you continue to fill us up with uh, tools and strategy and laughter and a little messiness. <laughs> um, and allow us to um, have joy. So thank you all so much. Um, I think there's some thank yous. Or am I doing the thank yous? I will let, um, well, I'll create space to uh, have Kelly Hayes give the thank yous, but uh, thank you all so much. Please, let's celebrate yourselves. Give yourselves a little round of applause. Yes, and thank you so much, friends. We love you so much. Thank you. You are ridiculous, and I love you. <laughs> Um, Freedom School has been one of our most important partnerships and one of those that is closest to my heart. And I, I know we will continue to build with you all through the new formations that are happening and just in partnership because we are one community. And with those thank yous, um, I want to give a shout out to everyone who has donated. Um, this event is a fundraiser. And so if you look at the back of your program, there is a, a QR code. You can donate to the groups that are being honored tonight if you so choose and are able. Um, we are in a position now to donate at least $1,000 to each of these groups to support their ongoing work. So I want to thank everyone who has already donated. You are amazing and you are supporting deeply important work. So that is our first thank you to folks who have donated. I want to thank Haymarket House for hosting us tonight in this beautiful space which they make affordably available to community groups and we know how impossible that is in this city right to get space to have movement events happen particularly outside in a lovely space like this it's virtually unheard of so so much gratitude to them i want to thank miriam kaba for beginning this tradition of celebration yes let's give a hand for miriam And I once again want to uplift our artist, Corey Lynn, who created the beautiful print that has gone out to all of our honored groups, as well as the lovely art that went to Chris. And Naima Thomas, who made the award that has been shared with all of you. And I know a lot of people aren't here tonight who have participated in defense committee work and deserve to have that honor as well. So we are going to make that available via public link, um, both the award for participation in defense committee work and the poster um, of grieving being about love and grieving together being about love because I want everyone to have access to that who wants to create space for that in their lives or in their groups. We need to honor our grief together. It's part of how we love each other. So gratitude for that. And with that, I want to hand it off to Atina who's going to close us out tonight. All right. I'm going to do something very... Um, very brief, but of course, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be me if I didn't involve you all somehow. So before we go and eat, which we're going to do very soon, I'm going to need a little bit of audience participation. Repeat after me. Take care of each other. Reciprocity. Choose each other in the struggle. Solidarity. Okay, now we're going to sing it. It's going to be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, I'll go and then you go. Take care of each other. Reciprocity. Choose each other in the struggle. 
solidarity. solidarity. Take care of each other. Reciprocity. Reciprocity. Choose each other in the struggle. Solidarity. Solidarity. Okay, I'm not going to make you do the full round because I don't. <laughs> but sing, sing it to yourself. Sing yourself to sleep later. <laughs> Teach it to the children. Okay, this is my last thing uh, that I wrote for this, um, a little poem song called Solidarity Song. <clears throat> Don't forget how we held each other. Don't forget how we saved all that we could. Don't forget how we forgave each other. So much still hurts, but we'll find our way together. Even now we still hold each other. We're still saving all that we can save. Even when it's hard, protect each other. So much still hurts, but we can heal together. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for being here in this space with us tonight. This work is sacred to me. This is where I go to church, wherever we are together in the name of justice and community and protecting each other and being strong together. And I am so grateful for you all and everything that it took for you to be here with us tonight. And so I, wanna, I want us to all give each other a hand. And let's give one more round, really big round for our honorees tonight and the people we are celebrating. Let's give them a shout of, we love you. We love, we love you. And we love you all for being here with us. We have some wonderful food. Let's it, remember to mask up when you go inside for any reason, including grabbing some of that food. But please help yourself to some wonderful vegan soul food. We have wine and an assortment of beverages over there as well. Let's enjoy this space and please talk to someone you don't know. And let's make some connections and continue the work. Thank you.